It's the largest ancient semi-rural woodland in South Yorkshire, covering 350 acres. It is steeped in history. It is not just a wood. We will visit many interesting sites along the walk. We'll find an ancient Iron Age stone. We will visit the Cupids, which I will explain what they are later on. We will see a wood collier's grave. We will visit an old, the site of an old ancient fort. The remains an old water mill. Finally finishing off with a bit of a surprise, something most unusual in the middle of such an ancient wood. Before we begin the walk, I want to take you, show you around the Graves Woodland Discovery Centre, which is placed in the woods. It's an interesting place to start your walk. You can get maps for all the various walks. There are over 15 kilometres of paths in this wood. There's plenty of different routes you can take. So, let's get on with the video. Let's get walking. This is the JC Graves Discovery Centre here in Ecclesaw Woods. There is a small amount of parking within the premises with extra parking all along the road. You can see demonstrations here of many woodcrafts. You can also learn how to make things out of wood. There's a souvenir shop where you can buy, buy many wooden ornaments etc. There's a cafeteria, a takeaway. There are public toilets. Unfortunately, due to current lockdown regulations with the COVID-19, the toilets are the only thing that's open. They've had to close everything else in the meantime. You're so welcome to come and have a walk around. You can actually buy logs here if you've got a log burner or an open fire. You do have to phone up and book the logs before you collect them. You can either book them by phone or text. You can get maps of all the different routes. If you go online you'll find out when the various demonstrations are taking place. They do different demonstrations each week. So we walk through the first part of Ecclesaw Woods, it's straight on along all the paths to so get to Whiteley Wood Road. Then we cross over Whiteley Wood Road into the next section of the woods. First port of call is the 5,000 year old cup and ring stone. 
find this, continue along the path, you come to this sign. That erecting you straight along to Dobcroft Road and Whirladay Road, the direction you've just come from. As you come to the sign you will see these two trees close together and a very small path going down. Follow this path down here and you will come to the Cup and Ring Stone. So here we have the cup and ring stone. Most cup and ring marked stones in UK are further north, predominantly Northumberland and Scotland. Nobody knows the significance or origin. They are believed to date back to four to five between four and five. They are believed to date back four to five thousand years. So we're now done a U-turn, leaving the cup and ring stone behind, come back to the path where we just came. We now head up along this path, signposted Whirladale Road. So we follow the path straight up, we come to Whirladale Road, go straight across Willowdale Road and continue into the next section of woodland. So approximately 100 metres away from Willowdale Road, just walking on this path we'll see this bench. Just past the bench are these two large trees on the left and just opposite a much smaller tree and a very small path leading up to one of 60 cupids that are in these woods. This is one of the most predominant and easier to find ones. Cupids are characterised by a round circular earth and rubble bank with a break and possibly a bank ditch on the downslope. Cupids were used for the production of white coal. This was wood that had been heated to the point that all the moisture was driven out but not allowed to char like charcoal. White coal burns intensely but at lower temperature than charcoal and was used for small scale lead smelting. Some of these cupids have been mistaken for bomb craters but although this is a very large wood there's only actually one bomb crater in the woods. So we've now turned around again from the cupid, walk down the path, turn left along to the bench. 
we've come to this post here just opposite the bench and we take a right hand turn just come down the path we turn right and we find the grave of George Yardley a local wood collier a wood collier is somebody who makes white coal or charcoal it's on this very spot where his cabin stood you'll see there are many names on his gravestone the other names are the names of his friends and the local publican who paid to have this monument erected this is most unusual to have other people's names on a gravestone unless they're actually buried there it is believed that they felt guilty because George was a not well known drinker they allowed him to go home on the fateful night of the 11th of October 1786 in such a drunken state that he fell asleep and never noticed the cabin was burning around him and he was burnt to death so as we leave the grave of George Yardley behind we continue to walk downhill along this path along to our next point of interest just 100 meters downhill from George Yardley's grave we come to the Collier's Pond the pond was actually created by friends of Ecclesaw Woods and Sheffield City Council in 2008-2009 to encourage wildlife into the woods. It was formerly a dish, a ganister quarry. Ganister is a hard rock containing much silica which was excellent for making furnace li linings. These were used in the 1850s to 1920s for converting iron to steel. Ganister was quarried, washed and ground and mixed to a paste. This was used to make bricks which then lined furnaces or mixed with plastic material to be moulded all over difficult areas. Ganister was taken away by a tramway to Abbey Lane until the quarry was abandoned around 1910. As you can see, it is actually frozen over today due to these very low temperatures. Now continue down the path. down the path come to a fork and we take the right fork follow this path down and we're now just a few hundred a few hundred meters from the road At the end of this path we'll turn right and cross over the road So we cross the road and now back into the woods again. We're down this path and then turn right. Walk into the woods and we take this main path, which is quite slippy today. Temperatures warming up very slightly, but still a couple of degrees below freezing. We've come to yet another junction in this labyrinth of pathways. 
continue straight across along the sign to Abbey Road South around at the bird sanctuary. We come up, we see this tree on the slope. We'll take the right turn over the bridge. Over to the left here, see the fenced off area, 17 acre bird sanctuary. Over 60 species of birds have been spotted in here. There's also a family of herons. Continue up the path, circumnavigating the bird sanctuary, heading towards a Roman British fort. Well, along the path, we come to a fork in the path. We're going to take the right hand fork. Through the gate. Up past the picnic site. As we get to the top of the hill, on the right we see a seating area overlooking the steep embankment going down into Lim Valley and the Lim Brook. Over to the left is the site of a Romana British fort. There's nothing left of this fort now apart from a few embankments. But there's no public access because it is within the boundary of the bird sanctuary. It is on this site in the year 829 that the King of Northumbria surrendered to King Ebert of Wessex. Back down the path that we've just come up and take a left. They're very slippy down here. But it's very hard packed snow which has ice underneath it. Heading down the pathway down here. Getting quite steep. We'll take another left and down some steps. So we'll come down a series of steps, very icy, with handrails. We're going to turn right over the bridge and then go left and left again. Turn left along this pathway, follow the course of Limbrook. So we now come down to another gate, go through the gateway, we we'll turn right, heading towards Rycroft Mill. Here we are at Rycroft Mill. We know there was a working mill here in 1655 because there was an agreement between two Henry Brights, father and son, which refers to Watercorn Mill Indoor. 
This mill was sometimes called Rycroft Mill, sometimes Dorcorn Mill. Sometimes it was also called Jackie Mill. Around 1850 the mill was used to blow air for lead smelting, but later reverted to milling grain. The last miller was Robert Unwin, who left the mill around 1872. The buildings have vanished and all that is left is the back of the wheel pit, which we can see now. Continuing up the track, we'll see a wall in front of us there and a gateway. Just before the gateway, there's a path off to the left. And we take that path towards the site of Dormore Mine. So finally, at the top of this slope, we've come to a clearing. Clearing was a site of door mine, which was mined by two brothers up until 1940, when the government closed the mine and employed the brothers in more productive mines as part of the war effort. So we turn around, go away from the mine, head back down the track that we've just come up. As you can see, we have the river here, very vivid orange, due to all the iron ore in the soil and the surrounding areas. So well, we've come back down past Rycroft Mill and now come to Rycroft Bridge. It's been a pack horse bridge here since mid 18th century. So continue down past Rycroft Bridge. We come to a gate. We're now going to turn left. and head back over Limbrook. Crossing over Limbrook, we now take a right turn, sign posted to Avidale Road South. There we are, in the middle of this ancient woodland not what you'd expect. It's a miniature railway. Currently closed due to Covid. It's very busy here, very popular when it is open, particularly in the summer. Beautiful little steam miniature railway. We'll leave the railway line now, turning back round, going back to the path, turning right, we're now going to head back to the end of this walk. Go up to a fork in the paths, we'll take a right hand fork heading down towards Aberdale Road. So we'll now come down to Aberdale Road. I'm going to take a left hand turn. Just across the road over Aberdale Road is the Aberdale Industrial Hamlet. Currently closed but a very interesting place to visit. Here we are at the end of this walk, approximately five miles for Saw Woods. It's been a very interesting place to visit. 
lots of history to it. I hope you've been entertained and found it very interesting. I do try to upload my videos on a Sunday evening. If you subscribe, click on the bell, you will get notifications every time I upload, it, upload a video. At the moment, due to Covid restrictions, the activities are pretty restricted, mainly walking. Once events start opening up again, I will be doing a lot more variation on what I'm filming. So until that, until then, thank you very much for watching Out and About with Martin. See you again soon. Thank you.